On today's episode, we've got even more rumors flying around the 25K Tesla Compact, new Cybertruck updates, SpaceX continue pushing forward with orbital Starship testing while Blue Origin's moon lander protest falls flat, we're talking about why Joe Biden refuses to say the word Tesla, and we watch a bunch of lunatics turn a broken Model 3 into an off-roading machine. So let's get going. We've got yet another new rumor in the saga of the $25,000 Tesla compact car, and this one is all about batteries. This rumor broke too late to make it into our last video all about the cheap Tesla compact, so let's get this in right off the top. It's now being reported that Tesla has made a deal to purchase Blade batteries from rival EV maker BYD in China. This rumor comes again from Ray4Tesla on Twitter, the same source as our last rumor update on prototype production on the new Tesla Compact. This would be nuts if true. The Blade battery is a relatively new product developed by Chinese EV company BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams. They're a direct competitor with Tesla in both China and Norway. The Blade is unique because it is a lithium iron or LFP chemistry that is housed in a long, thin rectangular cell. It kind of looks like a very large blade, hence the name. BYD says that there are two major advantages with this design. One, it is very stable and resistant to heat when damaged. Testing has shown that when punctured, the blade cell will only get warm and will not produce smoke or fire, while a conventional lithium ion cell will typically heat to 500 degrees Celsius and burst into flames when punctured. Number two, the extraordinarily thin design lets the blade work in a cell to pack configuration, which is similar to Tesla's structural pack and allows for greater energy density at the pack level because they can fit more cells into a smaller space. This eliminates the need to put cells into a module and then put the modules into the pack, but it still wouldn't be as rigid as Tesla's structural pack, which can actually become part of the car's frame. From what I can tell, this blade pack doesn't look like it can do that. If Ray's latest rumor is true and BYD are planning to supply this cell technology to Tesla for a future vehicle, then this would be an unprecedented move. To date, Tesla has only used cylindrical battery cells in their vehicles. They started off with little laptop batteries from Panasonic back in the day that were basically the same size as double A's and have just gradually increased the diameter of the cell as they improved on the internal design. In addition, this would be the first time that Tesla has ever worked with a competing automaker on anything supply chain related. Tesla has always been known to design their own tech. The report says that the BYD battery supply deal will start in the second quarter of 2022 and that Tesla vehicles with the blade cell are already in the sample testing phase. And that would tie in with last week's rumor that Tesla China are testing some kind of new prototype vehicle at Giga Shanghai. This kind of deal would be a hard pill to swallow for most Tesla supporters as we're so used to seeing Tesla lead with innovation and unique design. We've never seen them resort to buying some other company's tech before. But if this is what we need to make the affordable Tesla happen, then obviously that would be worth it in the long run. Keeping in mind, this is all pure speculation about an unlikely partnership. So let's not get too carried away and stay tuned for more updates. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this before too long. On August 6th, SpaceX completed their first test stack of the Starship and Super Heavy launch vehicles. For the brief hour that these two stages were integrated, they formed the largest rocket in history. SpaceX lifted the Starship S-20 onto the Super Heavy B-4 and presumably latched the two together in some kind of test fitting operation. It made for some pretty crazy photos that really show off the epic scale of this thing. After making sure the two fit together, the Starship was brought back down and returned to its build site. This is a great sign of progress, but there is still so much more work to be done on both of these systems before we can even think about watching them fly. Elon says that SpaceX still needs to complete the heat shield on the S-20. We can see that one side of the rocket is mostly covered in the black hexagon tiles. Then they need to install heat shields on the thrust section of the B4 to protect the 29 Raptor engines. 
After that, Elon says that they will finish installing plumbing and activating four to seven massive custom propellant storage tanks. Then assemble, install, and activate a giant mechanical umbilical arm on the launch tower to fuel and power Starship. And of course, there is still critical testing to be done on the vehicles. S20 still needs to undergo cryoproofing with its six engine mounts installed to make sure the structure is sound. Then they'll need to install the engines and static fire Starship for the first time with all six Raptors. Then on the booster side, they'll need to keep installing more and more engines and conducting static fire tests in large clusters until they work up to a full 29 Raptor static fire. Only then, after we know that both of these rocket stages can reliably operate without exploding, then they can be restacked and final tested for an orbital launch. And understandably, that is going to take some time still. We're looking at weeks, maybe even months before the big show. The US Government Accountability Office has thrown out frivolous protests filed by Blue Origin after NASA awarded SpaceX with a $2.9 billion contract to develop a crewed Starship moon lander. As most of you probably know, NASA took bids from three companies on the development of a new lunar lander for their upcoming project Artemis that would see people finally return to the surface of the moon. SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dianetics submitted their proposals. In a perfect world, NASA would have awarded contracts for two out of the three bids to increase their odds of having a successful lander that is mission ready when the time comes to launch. But the budget that NASA ended up receiving from the US government just didn't afford the luxury of awarding two contracts. They could barely even afford one on the amount of money they were given to work with. And luckily for them, SpaceX not only provided a much cheaper proposal than their competitors, but the SpaceX lander was also deemed the most competent design out of the three, so they won the contract, obviously. Or obvious to anyone who isn't our friend Jeff Bezos. Jeff went off on a warpath to complain to everyone in sight that it wasn't fair that he lost. Jeff got on the phone and started complaining to his friends in the government. He even tried to wheel and deal NASA by offering to knock $2 billion off the Blue Origin price tag of $6 billion, which would still leave them over $1 billion more expensive than SpaceX. Bezos managed to elevate his complaining all the way to the US Government Accountability Office, who took 95 days to rule that any protests by Blue Origin or Dynetics were almost entirely meritless and frivolous. This means that NASA and SpaceX can finally get back to work on the Lunar Starship Lander, a project that had to be placed on hold for the three months of deliberation used up on deliberating those protests. It should be said that the SpaceX Starship is a vehicle that has actually flown and landed in the prototype stage, while the Blue Origin New Glenn rocket that theoretically would carry the lander to the moon has not even been prototyped yet, let alone tested. And the Blue Origin lander that they keep carting out for presentations is literally just a movie prop. That big round section is just a goddamn balloon. If you'd like to get even more space exploration news on a regular basis, then I bet you'd love our brand new sister channel on YouTube called The Space Race. We've expanded our network to include a new channel focused on the next generation of spaceflight and all of the major players in the new space race. Please check it out, subscribe to the channel, and drop some comments on the videos letting us know what you think. Tesla has now finally confirmed that the Cybertruck electric pickup truck is delayed until 2022 after months of hinting at the possible delay in reaching production by the end of this year. Elon Musk also warned that Tesla is going to have some challenges in bringing the Cybertruck to production due to features like the steel exoskeleton body that requires completely new manufacturing processes. The Tesla website now lists all three variations of the Cybertruck as entering production in 2022. And if there is one bit of good news here, it's that Tesla updated the Cybertruck webpage without increasing the list prices for any of the option packages which is something they've been doing for pretty much every other car they sell right now. The Model S long range went up another five grand just this week. It's unfortunate news to get for sure, but it just means that Tesla will be prioritizing the Model Y as production launches at Giga Texas. I know the Model Y isn't as exciting as the Cybertruck and we're all very eager to freak out the normies with our crazy sci-fi trucks, 
but it's the right business choice for Tesla to make. Cybertruck fans will wait as long as we need to in order to get our hands on one, while folks on the Model Y waiting list might just start jumping ship and buying something else when they get impatient. Just last week, we saw the Biden administration throw a big party at the White House for American automakers to talk about the upcoming transition to electric vehicles. And you would think that given the subject, it would be natural for Elon Musk or at least someone from Tesla to be on hand to give a presentation on electric car manufacturing. You know, given that Tesla is both an American company and the largest producer of electric vehicles in the world. But not only were Tesla not invited to the party at all, the word Tesla was never even spoken by anyone from the US government. Elon later tweeted that it seems odd Tesla wasn't invited. He then went on to post an ancient aliens meme with the text saying, I'm not saying it's sabotage, but it's sabotage. This is pretty weird, right? Like Joe Biden was all hyped to drive the new Ford F-150 Lightning and tour Ford's EV production line, but we've never even seen him in the same room as Elon. I don't think Joe has ever even mentioned Tesla specifically since he took office even though he spends a lot of time talking about electric cars and specifically about electric cars made in the USA. On the one hand, it could be simply because Tesla is already doing exactly what they need to be doing. They really don't need any encouragement or promotion from the US government. They've got this situation handled on their own, while the other American car builders obviously need their hands held through this whole electric transition thing, and they need all the attention and help that the government can stand to provide. Or it could be something else. It could have something to do with the United Auto Workers Union. This union is very old and very powerful, and they are very not happy that Tesla refuses to allow any of their workers to join. We've already seen in the first draft of Biden's new EV tax credit legislation that preferential treatment was given to unionized labor. The original wording of the bill gave the largest credit of $12,500 only to cars built in America by unionized workers. Non-unionized manufacturing plants, namely Tesla, would be given a reduced credit of $10,000. Like we said, it's not like Tesla really needs the help in this case, but it's just comical to see the lengths that their own government is willing to go just to exclude and penalize them for not being a part of the old guard and not going along with the old way of doing things, which is literally why they're so successful right now. All right, here's a cool fun note to end on. The dudes over at Grind Hard Plumbing Co. on YouTube are well known to turn regular vehicles into ridiculous off-road contraptions, and their latest build is the ultimate off-road Tesla. They took a wrecked Model 3 from a junkyard that had been in a head-on crash and modded it out with lifted suspension, huge tires, and a reinforced front end. It's absolutely silly and pointless, but it's fun as hell to watch. We'll add a link down below in the description if you'd like to check out the full video. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.